Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pinstripe Prospects podcast presented by Velocity 5 Sports Restaurant and Bar. My name is Tommy Romanelli, and I will be hosting this evening for episode 45 of our podcast. Uh, Rob Terranova, our usual host, uh, unfortunately cannot be with us tonight, so you have me as a host. And we definitely have a lot to talk about. Baseball is back, of course. We're in the middle of spring training, and we have a, a lot of different developments to get to. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to announce our panel tonight, uh, a panel that you've become very familiar with up to this point. Uh, first, we have Paul Pagnato III. Uh, Paul, how you doing? Doing great. Uh, actually, no longer in Tampa, Florida. So back in uh, Virginia, just arrived yesterday. So uh, it's a heck of a lot colder. Yeah, I noticed that you were in long sleeves there. How does that feel? I like the sunny, uh, sunny Tampa, Florida a little bit better. Uh, it's actually supposed to snow tonight and on Sunday. So I'm sure you're, you're in the Northeast too. So I'm sure you'll be getting some of that as well. Yeah, I thought we were done with it and just more coming. But, um, but next we have Joseph Dixon, our Charleston River Dogs reporter and one of the best out there. So Joe, how's it going tonight? Oh, it's going very well, Tommy. Thanks for asking. And uh, no snow here. So that's double good for me. Yeah, you, you are very correct about that. I think we all need to come visit you in Charleston before it actually gets warm here. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I mean, guys, let's, let's get started. Um, you know, just to start, we did have uh, some pretty, a pretty big week ourselves here at Pinstripe Prospects. Our brand new website launched. And, you know, we were supposed to launch that on March 1st, but of course we did have some technical difficulties and, you know, from all of us at Pinstripe Prospects, if you were uh, looking to access our site during that time, we, we absolutely apologize about that. But the hard work definitely went into it and we're, we're ready to go. We've been launched. Um, so I know all of us have had a chance to check out the site. So I just, I'm going to start with Joe. I just want to know, you know, have you really had a chance to go deep into it? And what'd you think? Oh yeah, no. The, the redesign is great with the the player database, obviously uh, being the the key part of it. Um, it's going to be like a, a one stop, you know, shopping for any Yankees fan who has any questions or, or want to see what who these guys are. We're coming up soon to the Yankees, so it's um, you know technical difficulties. To, you know, stuff happens, but it's up and running now, and I urge everyone to go out and and take a look and enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I personally did have a chance to to get to know it a little bit deeply this past few days, and honestly, it's it's a huge improvement over our last site. There's going to be so much more access uh, to players and knowledge of players, and it's the design looks great. So, uh, you know, I do want to give a shout out to our producer and our managing partner Robert Pimpser because the amount of work that that man put into this site was amazing. I've just been astounded at everything he finds the time to do. So definitely kudos to him. Uh, Paul, what did you think? I absolutely love it. Uh, other than the player database, which is by far the most unique thing that we have to offer on the new site, it is definitely easier to navigate around using the search bar, easy, uh, access to our social media accounts. If you haven't already, check out our YouTube page. That is going to be one of the premier things moving forward that you're going to be able to be able to watch videos of pitchers, uh, hitters, you know, just, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have great different side angles, front views, and it's just going to be fantastic moving forward. So uh, YouTube page, definitely check that out. And uh, check out the new website, guys. You know, it's, you know, we're learning. So if, if you have any feedback, please email and, and reach out to us. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And Paul, you mentioned the YouTube page because I think that that's going to be a huge addition for us this year. Can you just run down real quick for me? You know, if a fan that goes to our YouTube page to watch these videos, what could they expect to see? Absolutely. Well, Matter of fact, I am going to defer that question to Rob when he is um, on the podcast next week. I believe it's next week uh, when he's in Tampa, Florida. 
it's it's actually now that I'm thinking about it, it's going to be two weeks when he's down there in Tampa, Florida for spring training, and he will give you a whole rundown of of that because he knows that inside and out. He's the one that designed it. He's just fantastic at what he does, and um, he'll be able to tell you what to look for moving forward. So instead of me giving you a, a, a shorter version of an answer, I will I will defer that to Rob in two weeks. So please be tuned to look out for that. That is going to be exciting stuff that we have upcoming for this season, and uh, he will get into that. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, right there from Paul Pegnato, we had breaking news. In two weeks, you will get to see the man himself, Robert Pimpsner, on this podcast. So it's something you're definitely not going to want to miss. But uh, but one thing I did want to highlight, because we all mentioned it a little bit, was the player database on the site. And the player database is going to really set this website apart. It's going to be something that you're going to be able to click on and find sort by team, by player, and you're going to be able to get all this information that you can't really find anywhere else, including uh, when they're Rule 5 eligible, when they're eligible for free agency, what level are they currently at, are they righty, lefty, uh, you know, height, weight, and um, how the Yankees acquired them, and also what we expect their estimated time of arrival in the big leagues to be. So this is something that you're going to be able to go right into. You're going to be able to click on that player if there's a specific player you want to know more about. And every article that has come across our site that is related to that player is going to be in one central location for you to be able to search that for. So I just wanted to highlight that. It's awesome. Check it out. There's a lot of new features that we haven't even touched on yet. So definitely something that everybody should should take advantage of. Um, and Joe, was there anything in particular about the site that we haven't mentioned yet that, that you but in particular, like, um, I don't, I don't think so. I think you guys covered it all. I mean, the big thing uh, coming up this season will be the expanded video, and that's something that I'm really excited about. Um, we're going to have uh, basically everyone at every level taking video of these guys as the year goes through. So, um, it's going to be a good resource for people who um, who want to learn more about these guys and, and get a sense of who they are and 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 get a look at them too, because that's that's the big thing here with uh, this day and age, of course, seeing the guys uh, rather than just hearing rumors and, and kind of, you know, the old fashioned way of print media, that's kind of going out the window with this update. So I'm looking forward to the video aspect of it. And uh, I got to start learning uh, a little bit more on how to shoot video as well. Yeah, and I agree with you. It's something that we're all go definitely going to get better at as we keep going. And, and we're, there's going to be a lot more video produced this year which is going to be great because when you go to the site and you know a player is getting called up or promoted to a different level, you're actually going to be able to see that player and make a, a determination of what you think about that player yourself. So you're definitely, we're going to make you smarter than the average fan. But uh, moving on a little bit, so we obviously are in the midst of spring training, which means that there are rumors swirling everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to start. I think that the biggest story so far is the way that Miguel Andujar and Esteban Florial are just absolutely tearing it up right now. So the first question I'm going to direct to Joe here. Do you think that Andujar has a realistic shot at making the open day, opening day roster? Oh, absolutely. I, <clears throat> as far as Andahar is concerned, he's been the one kind of breakout star of this camp, I would say. Um, so he's got a real shot. I mean, he's he's off to a great start. I mean, we're only like eight games in, so we have to temper our expectations a little bit. But um, so far, he's shown what he can do at the plate. And uh, I, he has four home runs, of course, in the first eight games of uh, – the, or seven games, I'm sorry, of the spring with eight runs driven in. So he's he's really been the breakout guy. Of course, we've all kind of talked about his defense a bit, and that that's certainly a concern still. But here, here's the other thing with Andujar. He's a hard worker. He's he's going to make every effort to be a, a, a very good third baseman in the future. So um, even though we kind of harp on his defense a little bit, he's, he, he does have the raw tools and ability, and, and he's kind of, uh, you know, showing that off in Tampa so far this this spring. Definitely. Now, and obviously, if he continues to hit at this pace, I don't see any way that how the Yankees are going to be able to keep him off of their roster. That being said, I think that if he doesn't keep up this type of pace, 
and you know maybe he goes into a mid spring training slump or something i actually think he's going to start the year uh with me here in scranton because i just feel like with the way that the roster is set up right now Andujar is going to get the opportunity to work on that defense a little bit although i don't think his defense is as bad as what everybody you know is kind of been making of it and one thing i did here recently is that every single day he's on the backfields with the Yankees infield coordinator and he's working on his footwork. He's working on his mechanics. So he's definitely working really hard at it, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Yankees let, see him, have him refine those mechanics to start triple A. And the other thing that I, I think is that with the I mentioned roster construction with Brandon Drury on the roster now, and I have a feeling that they're going to want him to start the year at third base just to have that little bit of a veteran presence. And they're going to, and second base, I think, is the one that's truly open because I don't think they want to really want to start Drury at second base as a starting second baseman. And honestly, Tyler Wade's been killing it as well, something we'll talk about in a little bit. But I just, I feel like that Andujar is going to be someone they want to start in AAA unless he forces them to, to, be on the opening day roster but uh but paul what are your thoughts on that what do you think about andrew Hart and his shot at making the the opening day roster so entering tuesday miggy was eight for 19 as joe said with four home runs he's had two doubles eight rbis and and seven games slashing 421 421 and 1.158 um he hasn't walked yet, struck out five times, so he, he has struck it out quite a bit. Uh, very aggressive, seeing the ball very well. This looks like a beach ball to him right now. Obviously making solid contact on, on really good swings. The kid's got a great attitude, seems to have improved his defense since last year. Uh, as you said, working very hard with Carlos Mendoza. I think if he keeps playing well, especially defensively, he'll force Cashman and Boone's hand and open the season as a starting third base. Having said that, I truly believe he's going to cool off and his weaknesses in the field are, will start to show a little bit. In my opinion, Drury will be the starter in Toronto on March 29th as the Yankees open season. However, I'm I'm rooting for, for Andohar. I, I hope he wins the job. I think that'd be a great story. I think he is going to hit at the major league level. I just don't think his time is is right now. And uh, I, I really believe that. I believe that the advanced scouts and the and the pro scouting department, you know, acquired Brendan Drury, and he's going to work out, and he's going to be a, a good player for the Yankees. Uh, I, I truly believe that um, in in that department. Uh, they've obviously had success. I mean, just look at all the trades Brian Cashman's made uh, relying on on his scouts. So I, I truly believe that Drury will be given this this start and um, Andy Hart will begin in, in AAA. Yeah, and the one thing about Drury is the things that I hear the Yankees organization say about him and his potential – I feel like the things that they're saying is exactly what they were saying about Starlin Castro when they came over. He's a he's a guy with untapped potential. Everything you've seen from him so far, which has been a solid big leaguer, is not even the best to come. So that's why I just think that having him in a spot where he is maybe a little bit out of his comfort zone is not something that they want initially. So... I just, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they have so much stock in him that it's going to be hard for Andrew Hart to make the roster at third base over him. Uh, so uh, did you want to respond to that? Yes. The, the only thing I wanted to add is that you also have to look at, one, it's early on in spring training, so the pitching isn't sharp. And it not, not meaning to take away from all the things that he's done because it's been fun to watch. It's been, like you said, the highlight of spring training. But also the pitchers that he's faced, he's not facing the aces. He's not facing the the great arms in the bullpen, the closers. He's facing triple A guys, double A guys. He's, he's facing lesser competition. So it's nice to see him to be able to, you know, watch what he can do against that type of 
of pitching, but we really haven't seen him as the pitchers ramp up and, and see how his at-bats look against the, the better competition. Absolutely. And I'm going to give you a response to that in just a second, but I do want to take a time out uh, for a word from our sponsor. Attention cancer victims. If you or a loved one lived, worked, or visited Lower Manhattan in the months after the 9-11 attacks and have been diagnosed with cancer, federal benefits, and health care may be available. Attorney Eddie Markowitz has helped many families recover substantial benefits from the September 11 Victims Compensation Fund. The James Adroga Health and Compensation Act has been extended, but time is limited. Attorney Markowitz is proud to serve as a counsel to the Zadroga family. Let him help you too. These benefits are not just for rescue workers, but to anyone who qualifies. The fund covers many cancers, including prostate, skin, lung, and breast. Please call 1-800-LAW-HELP. That's 1-800-LAW-H-E-L-P to see if you qualify. Okay, so going back into what you were saying, Paul, with, with the competition that Andujar has been facing so far, it is lesser. Um, than you would see. So, and I actually am a believer that the first couple of weeks of spring training really do not mean anything, mostly because most hit, most hitters and pitchers aren't even nearly at the top of their game. So there's going to be balls left over the plate and everything, and timing is just not there. I think that when you get down to the last like two weeks of the, of spring training is when you really make or break your spring training and what impression you made on the team. So I agree with you. If Andujar continues to hit like this it may be going into the last year or last few weeks then you're really talking about something but right now i think it's just a fun show to watch um so joe the question that i have for you though is what do you think and what kind of pace do you think andrew hard needs to hit at in order to actually make the roster well, as, as you guys have mentioned, he's really going to have to put together like a, a really solid spring. So he's going to have to at least hit 300 or better um, and keep showing that power that he's shown so far. Um, as you guys mentioned, he's going to face better and better competition as the spring goes on. As we've seen with a couple of the guys, uh, you know, pitchers and such, uh, Chapman struggle a little bit. You know, Chance Adams has been struggling a little bit. So, you know, those guys like that are going to only get better over the next couple of weeks. So uh, once Andrew Hart starts facing, you know, sort of the, the more tough, Top line guys, the more uh, top of the line relievers and things like that. That's when we'll see um, whether he's going to make this roster or not. So um, I, he would have to at least hit, in my mind, 300 and keep that power pace up and, and keep driving in runs and and do it against good competition. Because as we know, a lot of spring training games, even late, can kind of turn into you know a bunch of guys in Triple A uh, and Double A still being out there. So um, he's going to have to do it against the top notch talent and and. And uh, you know, just be consistent, uh, which you know only time will tell. Um, if he if he does that, then I think he's got a shot. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, for as fun as Andrew Har has been to watch, there's one other guy in spring training that has been almost quietly killing, but he's opening a lot of eyes because he's a name that we've heard a lot over the last year, but fans have not gotten a chance to see him until this point. And that, and of course, I'm talking about Esteban Florio. He's a guy at Pinch Drive Prospects that I could tell you up and down our our organization, we absolutely love him. He's a guy that we've been on right from the beginning. And when his name was surfacing in trade talks, you know, especially when it was between him and Mateo to grab Sonny Gray, I think all of us were screaming at the top of a mountain, like, said Mateo. And, that, and that's saying a lot just because, uh, you know, Mateo is great. So... I mean, have you been surprised at all at the showing that Florio has been put up, Joe? No, not at all, because uh, he was here most of last year uh, in Charleston, and uh, this this guy has a potential to be a five-tool player, and that's not any kind of exaggeration. I mean, he runs as fast as anybody you'll ever see, uh, probably almost as fast as Mateo, if you can even imagine that. Um, he's a guy who has a great arm in the outfield, really tracks the ball well. Uh, he's got some pop in his bat from the left side of the plate. Uh, he's He hit 297 here in Charleston, and he got bumped up to Tampa where he hit 303. Um, so he's, he's really a guy, and also on the base pass, uh, he's going to develop uh, into a, a base stealer as well. So he's he has all these tools and all these ways he can potentially beat you. And he's, he's a guy I would not. Uh, even think about trading uh, unless he were to, you know, somehow fall fall down this year because um, his potential is is that good. And uh, you you can't, you know, find potential like that every day. So he's a guy 
uh, the Yankees rightfully held on to during all these trade talks. And, and also, you mentioned Mateo on the trade for Sonny Gray last year. I think part of, you know, the thing with Mateo is that we always worried about his maturity. Uh, that is not an issue with uh, Floreal at all. Um, as Pat Osborne said last year to me at one point, he's a better person than he is a player, if you can imagine that. So, And all the all the River Dogs staff loved him because he was so respectful and, and, and very polite and, and very giving of his time. So uh, he's one of these guys that, you know, I, I think has the potential to be a, 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 a like in the, a multiple, a multiple uh, all-star type player in the future. Yeah, and from somebody who has never actually had a chance to see Florio because I'm at the AAA level here, I watching him so far in spring training, the one thing that jumped out at me is he's a really big guy. Like I, When you hear of the type of player that, that a guy like Florio is, but you've never seen him before, you kind of expect a smaller frame. But, I mean, he's got some size. So, I mean, that's that's something that really sticks out to me because that's only going to play even better as he gets gets older and his, he develops and his power develops. So I'm pumped. I can't wait to see what he turns out to be. I can't wait to see what kind of season he has. But you had mentioned that you consider him untouchable. And this is actually something that we were discussing off, off air is – what who would like at this point with how highly we do think of Florio, who would you trade him for? And uh, you know, Paul, you had an interesting take on that one. So why don't you enlighten us on that? So for me, first I'd like to preface this: I am ecstatic that he is a part of this organization. I'm very high on this young man. I couldn't agree more with Joe. I think he's going to be a multiple-time All-Star. Flo's the real deal and a thrill to watch. He's fast, smart, a plus defender. He's going to develop power at the plate and hit for average. Having said that, the only player that I would honestly include him or think about including him in, uh, in a package for is Manny Machado. I, I think... I think Machado is one of those guys that would put us over the edge and give us that that World Series, if we're not favorites already, but make us that World Series favorite because the only position really that we are kind of lacking is 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 that third base, and he's a plus plus defender. He is known for killing the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And I just, you know, I think he's one of the, the elite bats and elite fielders in this game. He's a complete player. You know, with when we talk about prospects, you say, okay, well, you can dream. You know, what, what could this guy be? If Florio turns into Machado, I mean, you know, wow. You know, obviously that'd be a bad deal for us if, if that happened. But, you know, the percentile of him turning into – you know, there's a lot of risk. That's that's all I'm trying to get at. Is is there's still a lot of risk? He's a young player, and if you can win a World Series by going to acquire somebody, I think you do it. And that's under the the belief that 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 I, I'm, you know, when you're that close, and if one guy is going to put you over the top, and you 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 make that acquisition to win a championship. And I think Manny Machado's that guy. But other than other than Manny Machado, I mean, obviously Bryce Harper's not going anywhere. Mike Trout's not going anywhere. You know, I would not have even considered anything for Garrett Cole. I would not have considered. Honestly, there's not not really a pitcher out there. You could you could sell me Michael Fulmore straight up for Florio, and I wouldn't do it. Um, really, the only name that I would consider is is Manny Machado. See, but here's where I disagree with you with that because number one, Machado is on a is on a one year deal right now, so you're giving up an elite prospect for somebody who could be gone next year. So that's where I have the problem with it because it's you're you the amount of control that you have over Florial between now and then just doesn't make sense to me that you would be able to include it now. Manny Machado talent level absolutely. But if he was on a seven-year deal right now, I'd be like, yeah, go ahead, do it now. But so, like, I mean, you mentioned Mike Trout. Like, yeah, okay, I would do it for Mike Trout, even though they don't need him. Uh, it's But he's the caliber of player who you have some control over that 
yeah, you could trade him for that. But what if I told you, I mean, what if it was guaranteed that, and I told you right now, Manny Machado is 100%. Yankees acquire him for Esteban Florio, and he goes in free agent to somewhere else. I mean, would you still make that deal? Well, look, flags fly for forever. A uh, general manager told me that. A former general manager told me that. And I have never, ever forgotten that. And I, I respect this 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 uh, mentor of mine. And after hearing his philosophy on why, that well, that's kind of why I have that philosophy, is... What you got to ask yourself is, obviously, if you don't win a World Series championship, it's not worth it. If you win a World Series championship and Florio turns out to be better than Machado, it's still probably worth it. A.J. Burnett signing, worth it. You got a World Series championship out of it. Spathia signing, Mark Teixeira signing. Even I'd go as far as Alex Rodriguez signing. You know, all those moves brought us a championship and I don't think you can you, that that should not be lost on on an organization fans you know uh, front office personnel that made the decisions and ownership I mean you you know your your etched in stones ring very hard for rings to rust <laughs> so uh, you know you you win a championship and um you know, you, you win the trade. Yeah, but if we lose the World Series this year, is it going to be because of hitting? Because if you really think about it, uh, and this lineup is potent. So, in my opinion, if you're, I mean, a pitcher would be the, the way to go. Just because, I mean, Manny Machado would be outstanding. They, they would score more runs than, than any other team ever, probably. But, I mean, you're still going to have to pitch when you get into the, the postseason. So, I mean, what about Clayton Kershaw? Would you do that deal? Or Madison Bumgarner? I would. I would. Actually, now now that you said Bumgarner, I would. Kershaw's not going anywhere. We all know that. So, uh, but Bumgarner, Bumgarner for Florio. How about that one, Joe? Um, that, that'd that be interesting to see if, if you do that. A, a Southpaw known, known to thrive in the postseason – Oh, oh, a one for one, straight up. Would you would you consider doing that? I, I mean, I would consider that one uh, more than say Machado because of the things that Tommy mentioned. Because you know, pitching is going to be a little bit of a concern as it is. I mean, really, with every team and injuries and everything. So, I mean, that would be something to consider. But also, I'm just kind of going back to what you were saying, and and you know, if you get a ring, then it's worth it. Um, if, if you're going to trade a guy like that, it better be for a ring because you know, like for example, I grew up in the '80s and. Yankees were, were famous for making horrible trades um, for prospects, for guys who never never panned out or did anything for the Yankees. You know, Fred McGriff, Willie McGee, guys like that. Um, so, I mean, you got to be careful what kind of trade you make. But if, if it's for somebody who's, you know, like Bumgarner, for example, you know, then I can understand that. But uh, like for Machado, as Tommy brought up, um, with him not signed long term, uh, that's a real risk. And that's a real um, you know, a real problem I would have for that because you, you need to make sure uh, you're going to have whoever you're getting a trade for Florial for a few years because he's a he's a kid who um, you know he, if if he continues on his track he'll be in the Bronx under control for a, a few seasons. So um, and also with the Yankees' new you know mindset of keeping under the luxury tax uh, that's another important facet I think they look at as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely good stuff, and I don't think that there's really a wrong answer here. But you know, like like Joe said, I mean, you, you kind of want to get that that high quality player. Um, so I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But I think it's all safe to say that he's probably not going anywhere anytime soon, and we definitely look forward to to seeing that. But um, but we are going to move on here a little bit because Florial and Anduar are not the only topics of spring training so far. Of course, the one thing that we all went into spring training looking to see is Giancarlo in pinstripes. And 
they started off okay at the plate, and he's starting to get a little bit hotter at the plate. Now he's driving a lot of balls. I see a lot of balls going into the right center field gap. Hasn't shown us his power yet in a game. But um, but the big story, of course, this week was that Stanton got his first start in left field for the Yankees. And to put it mildly, it wasn't great. So he lost a lot of balls in the sun, a lot dropped in. But I know that, you know, it was a tough day in the outfield. So in terms of the Stanton to left field experiment, what were your thoughts, Joe? Well, I mean, yeah, it wasn't encouraging the way he played in left field, especially on that Sunday afternoon game. But um, as, as far as that goes, I mean, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, he's still he's still kind of new out there and left, so um, he's going to get more repetitions. If he's still doing that like a week or two from now, then, you know, I'm going to have an issue with that. Also, I mean, with Steinbrenner Field, um, of course, it's not as, as tall as Yankee Stadium, to say the least. Uh, it's basically like a triple-A stadium, so um, it's going to be a bit more windy, especially in Florida this time of year. Uh, you know, the sun's going to cause havoc, especially in day games. So, um, I mean, you know, I'm not making excuses for him. It wasn't a good performance. But, again, if he's doing that like a week or two from now, then, then you know, they have to reevaluate and, uh, and kind of start shifting some pieces around because that that was not a good performance to say the least but you know he's he's got time he's professional he'll i think he'll he'll adapt and adjust uh just give him time yeah and and the one thing that i had noticed and i was happy to hear aaron boone reiterate it when they interviewed him during the game he was taking he had excellent jumps on the balls he, he was taking excellent routes to the balls it, and it really, he really did just lose it in the sun. Again, not making excuses for him. He's a big leaguer. He's got to catch those balls. But I, I think that one start in the outfield should not determine his fate, you know, in left field. So I, definitely something that needs to be watched. And I know that the game that they played at the time of this recording this afternoon, he played again, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, well, you know, we'll see how he, he does with that. But, um, you know, as of right now, Paul, if they decided that they were going to go into spring or um, into the season, and, ju- and Stanton's going to have to play a lot of left field, do you feel comfortable about that? Well, as of right now, heck no. Um, he made a very negative impression on me as he misplayed the the three fly balls. Two were apparently lost in the sun. One was uh, in betweener that he could either tried to get and potentially could have gotten behind him or you know you, you you play it safely and the guy gets a single he played it safely um several of the the media members think he could have made a play Aaron Boone's pretty positive and has his guys backs um you know so it's it's one of those things where I am not comfortable with him yet However, you, you give him three more weeks out there, and I, I think he's going to be be okay. He's got he's got a, a good you know head on his shoulder. He's a veteran, and I, I think he's going to play play well out there. And it's going to be a non-event. Yeah, and I mean, only time will tell. But it, if you had to choose, then would you choose? Judge or Stanton to play left field if, if one of them, if you know, if something freak happens and one of them has to play the outfield more than expected. Well, I would probably go the DH route. Um, that's that's the situation that I would go in and have one of them stand right, one of them DH, guardian left, Hicks and center, and then have. Ellsbury, if Ellsbury's hurt, Frazier as a guy that you rotate between center and left field. Um, and same with Gardner. You can rotate him between center and left field as well. So I think the Yankees are in a pretty good position, even if the whole left field thing with Judge and Stan don't work out. I think they're in a, in a decent position. I, I think uh, every, everything's going to be okay. And, um, you know, I do think the whole the left field situation will work out in in the Yankees' favor, having Judge and Stanton both out there. Absolutely. And I just want to take another time out here, and I just want to remind our viewers and listeners, for all the latest and the best New York Yankees farm system coverage, don't forget to check out our website, 
www.pinstripeprospects.com. From player profiles to scouting reports to exclusive interviews and much, much more from every single Yankee minor league affiliate, pinstripeprospects.com is the number one source of Yankees prospect and organizational news. And also, if you're on the go and you want to, we want to be right there with you, don't forget to follow our Pinstripe Prospects on all of our social media handles, on Facebook at Pinstripe Prospects, on Twitter at Pinstripe Pros, and on Instagram also at Pinstripe Pros. We are the number one source of the Yankees and the prospect information, so please do not miss the posts, and don't forget to spread the word to your friends. So, again, moving on to the next topic for uh, spring training here. Uh, so, the one thing that was also on display against the Red Sox the other day was Chance Adams got another outing. Uh, Justice Sheffield got another outing. Both of them looked better than the first outing. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I thought that maybe Sheffield wasn't as dominant as he was in the first inning, but obviously it was an overall better performance in his second outing. The Yankees have raved about Chance Adams. To be honest with you, from somebody who's seen him up close this past year in Scranton, I personally think that he kind of has a little bit of a ways to go. Yeah, uh, just because I, he didn't seem to be locating as well as he can. And I think that's a key for Adams. If he's going to be the, the great pitcher that they all think he can be, he needs to be able to locate. So I know it's only two spring starts. It's his first full big league camp. So, you know, right now, who do you think has looked better, Joe? Uh, Sheffield or Adams? Well, Sheffield has has definitely looked a lot better. He's had a uh, better command on his pitches so far. Um, Adams is the kind of guy where if he if he's not hitting his spots and he has slight he has more trouble, quite honestly, because uh, with Sheffield uh, he has more velocity on his pitches and such. So um, Adams he's going to struggle if he's not get, keeping the ball down and not hitting his spots, and and that's what we're seeing kind of so far from him. Uh, he did improve over the second start, and again, it's it's still early. You know, it's only the second start here, so he has time to work on his command and get things turned around, and and hopefully, you know, stretch out a little bit as well, because um, he he's one of those guys, uh, you know, unlike Sheffield, who can you know just drop that slider and curve. Uh, he's got to keep his pitches down and hit his spots, and and we haven't seen that as consistently so far. So if he's again kind of like uh, what we're talking with Stan and some of the other guys, if he you know continues to improve, then you know. Uh, we'll see where he ends up in the end because I still think he's slated for Scranton, quite honestly, but, you know, only time will tell. Paul? So, Sheffield, uh, to answer your question, Sheffield's stuff is nasty. He looked great again on Sunday. Slider is fantastic. High velo with his fastball. This time he pitched to a better result. Than his, than, out, than his outing in Philadelphia where he gave up the three-run homer to Michael Franco. In all, the Southpaw fired two innings, permitted one earned run on two hits, two walks, while striking out one. The two walks you don't like to see, obviously struggling with command a little bit as well, um, as well as chance. You know, Adams did look better on Sunday than his first start. However, his command is just not there yet. And he's a command-type pitcher. He, he needs to have that facet in his game for him to be successful. So Sheffield's been been actually very impressive to me uh, just with his pure stuff. I, I just – his showcase of his slider is just nasty. And his, his fastball, you know, when he can locate that, that's, that's a great pitch. And, you know, he's got the changeup as well. So uh, Sheffield. Yeah, definitely. I've been mostly impressed with Sheffield's slider. It's just, it's been outstanding when it's on. But, you know, he is still a guy who hasn't pitched above double A. So it it's to be expected that he's going to be rusty. He's going to be, a, he's going to have to learn how to pitch at a different level here. And, uh, you know, it'll definitely be something to watch for, you know, the, the rest of spring. And honestly, at this point, neither of them are going to make the opening day roster. So just enjoy getting to, to see the talent that is on display there. Um, but I do want to bring up some other news that happened in this past week. The Yankees made a signing. They signed Adam Lynn, uh, first baseman, uh, also former outfielder, mostly played with the Brewers and the Blue Jays over his career. And 
it's definitely a signing for some depth uh, in case something happens to Greg Bird. So, you know, it, it, what was interesting to me was the guy hit 14, 15 home runs, something around there. He hit 300. He, he had a lot of RBIs. It, it was surprising to me that somebody who put up those numbers had to take a minor league deal to be depth in the major leagues. I guess that's just where we're at right now with the, the free agent signings. But wh- where do you guys think, uh, you know, he fits in? You know, what do you think of the signing? Well, Joe, we'll start you with you. Well, I was kind of surprised that they signed Lind a little bit, but I think that kind of speaks to Greg Bird uh, and his, and the injury problems that he's had. So um, I think it's a it's a good signing. There's there's really no risk. Lynn's been a solid player his whole career. He was a guy who came up through the uh, the Blue Jay system. I've seen him up close and personal, you know, hundreds of times. It seems like so he's he's a, a good player, a hard worker. He um, plays the game right. He's he's going to uh, fill a nice role there uh, behind Bird in case something happens because you know God forbid um, every time we think Greg Bird's about to show the world exactly what he has he ends up on the DL so um, you know that's a, it's a very good signing by Cashman and and uh, you're right it's shocking that a guy like that who had 300 14 15 home runs is sitting on the sidelines this this deep in the spring and he didn't have a deal lined up uh, even then he's still on a minor league deal so. Um, to me, that's kind of crazy, but it's a good pickup by Cashman, and and uh, it's it's a move that I wouldn't even thought you know to even make, quite honestly. So uh, I, I really do like the signing. Yeah, it surprised me as well. And again, just because of the numbers he put up, but I mean, absolutely great depth to have. Uh, my initial question is, what does that mean for Tyler Austin and their thoughts about him? The you know, obviously you can't have too much depth, and you never know what's going to happen, but Paul, do you think that this affects Tyler Austin negatively or pushes him maybe? Like, where do you think he lands now? Well, Tyler Austin has not looked great. And I think as a result of that, this is the reason why they signed the 40, 34-year-old first baseman and corner outfielder. You know, it's to compete mainly with Tyler Austin for a bench spot. You know, like you said, last season, Lynn hit over 300 with 14 jacks, about 60 RBIs for the Nationals in 116 games. You know, this should be viewed as an insurance policy for the oft-injured Greg Bird. But, you know, to note, Lind was an excellent pinch hitter last season. He hit a league-leading four pinch hit home runs and 48 plate appearances. So he has had that track record and success. I did have a chance to watch him up close and personal. Uh, My dad, I don't know how it happened, but is a Washington Nationals fan. And, uh, you know, in wanting him to go to games with me, I I would go and, and, you know, Lynn quickly became like my favorite national, you know, sorry, Bryce. Um, But, uh, you know, he, he just is a baller, man. He can just, he puts together solid at bats. He's just, he grinds up there and, you know, he was there pretty versatile you know the pitching staff that Washington has kind of covered for him in the corner outfield spots I don't think you know you're going to see Booney or or Cash use him in the outfield you know it hopefully not but um at first base he's not a liability I love this signing I really hope he makes opening day roster and and has a has a great year because I think he's very very valuable. He's a guy that I've been in on from day one of free agency that I kind of circled and targeted. So I am fired up that Adam Lind is uh, a New York Yankee. So you watched Nationals games and Adam Lind was the one that stuck out, not like Trey Turner or you know uh, D- Daniel Murphy. Max Scherzer. So, yeah, well, I, I always like, you know, I'm always thinking about the Yankees. And I'm like, all right, like, who can the Yankees get? You know, who, who would fit on the Yankees? And, you know, who's a free agent and has a chance of going to the Yankees? And, man, I mean, I, I, I zeroed in on Lind. And uh, just a couple years ago, I zeroed in on Brendan Ryan when I, when I went to Seattle. And I love the kid. And, and, you know, all well, young, older man now, I guess. He's got some gray hairs. But, uh, you know, I, I'm always thinking about the Yankees and, and piecing where that fits in the Yankees organization. And Daniel Murphy just doesn't fit 
you know, Trey Turner obviously isn't going anywhere. Bryce Harper potentially could. But, you know, I actually, I will be the first to admit when I'm wrong, I missed on Max Scherzer when, you know, he was a free agent. I thought, man, like, it's violent delivery, arm action I just didn't like. I I think this guy's going to get hurt. And, boy, was I wrong. That would have been a great signing for us. But, um, yes, to answer your question, uh, Lynn's a guy that, you know, give him a shot. And as you see him play, I think he's going to win you over. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, I always love watching them uh, pick up guys who can grind out at bats. So that's absolutely great. And, honestly, the pinch hitting, that's huge. I think that he has an excellent shot to be that guy off the bench this year. So uh, I really do see him making the roster. Uh, as far as, you know, your predictions, I want to know more. <clears throat> and you said that you zeroed in on Brendan Ryan, too. Uh, his batting average also zeroed on him. So <laughs> it wasn't Well, like, like uh, I've been very open in saying I value defense very, very high. So as a as a backup, if you can play defense and flash the leather like Brendan Ryan, you got a spot on my team. Absolutely. So the, the one other thing that you know we definitely want to touch on before we end the podcast here is Clint Frazier, who started off great, and Jacoby Ellsbury both out with injuries. Uh, Ellsbury is dealing with an oblique injury right now, and there's no timetable on his return. And of course, Frazier. You had a concussion banging into the wall after making that awesome catch earlier in the spring. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely something that's affecting the roster right now. Um, but, Joe, do you think that this is something to be concerned about? And if not right the second, you know, at what point of the spring do you get concerned about these injuries? Well, especially with, with like, Clint Frazier. Um, that one concerns me more than Ellsbury. I think we're kind of used to Ellsbury kind of getting hurt. So it's kind of hard to depend on, on Ellsbury. Um, so, but with Frazier, it seemed like this, this uh, concussion issue is, is really kind of lingering, which, you know, kind of concerns me. Um, he's, he's a guy, too, that I think we, we all like uh, as far as his bad speed and his approach to the game. But um, I, I just, I'm a little more concerned about him. But with the Yankees' outfield depth, it's not, a, it's not like a major concern. Um, I mean, you have four guys who can easily play the roster right now, or uh, play the outfield right now. Um, who are on the roster and, and, and can play it very well. So it's it's a concern, but, you know, I'm not too concerned if, if Frazier doesn't get out in the field uh, over the next couple of weeks, and I'm really concerned about him. But, um, you know, with Ellsbury, it's going to – I mean, any chance to trade him is probably gone. Uh, you know, once I think spring training started, that was kind of off the table anyway. But, um, you know – but, you know, I wish the best for him. Let's put it that way. Um, I'd like to see him start earning some of that contract he, you know, uh, signed with the Yankees. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, again, I'm hoping Frazier will come back and, and, you know, shake off the effects of that concussion. And, Paul, anything you want to add real quick? Yeah. You know, I am concerned about Frazier. I said last week I wasn't. The Yankees got me. Uh, the uh, The PR department... Uh, definitely got me and, and tricked me. I, it's definitely more serious than uh, than they led on to. Reporters were previously told that he could see game action early as late this week, but obviously that's not going to happen. And, and uh, Clint just has not responded well, uh, uh, you know, as as he and the team would have hoped. As far as Ellsbury, man, I think that one hurts a little bit more than than we're giving it credit for. You know, he could be out four to six weeks somewhere in, in that timetable. And, um, you know, Cashman came out and said he still values Jacoby as a, an above-average player, which, in fact, he is, and analytics prove that. So I, I think every 20, 25-man uh, roster spot is incredibly valuable, and you lose a guy that can, pretend, you know, potentially, you know, be be a guy. Um, yeah, I think that hurts. Yeah, for sure. So obviously, you know, you never want to see anybody hurt. So we definitely wish both of them a speedy recovery. But unfortunately, our time has flown by this week and we are out of it. So that is everything that we have this week. It's the it has been the 45th edition of the Pinstripe Prospects podcast presented by Velocity 5 Sports Restaurant and Bar. 
Don't forget to check out our website, www.pinstripeprospects.com, and all the new great features that we have going on in there with the new site. And for all the lady, latest Yankees news in their farm system, follow us on our social media pages for on-the-go updates. On Facebook, our page is Pinstripe Prospects, and on Twitter and Instagram, we are at Pinstripe Pros. You can now also check us out on YouTube, so catch many of the videos of the Yankees' top prospects. And if you're enjoying our podcast, please subscribe to the Pinstripe Prospects podcast on SoundCloud. We also ask that if you feel we're doing a great job, and you know we are, give us that five-star rating on the Apple Store or the Google Play app. If you have any questions or suggestions for content on this podcast, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to our managing partner, Robert Pinsner, at rob at pinstripeprospects.com or our normal host, Rob Terranova, at rterranova at pinstripeprospects.com or myself at tromanelli at pinstripeprospects.com. So from Joseph Dixon, Paul Pagnato III, and our producer behind the camera, Robert Pinsner, my name is Tommy Romanelli, and like a third strike, we're out.